Hi everybody, welcome to day two of working with similar figures. Today we're going to be focusing on finding missing measurements of similar figures. So the strategy that we're going to be using for finding missing measurements of similar figures, um, I like to call it the box method. It's actually just setting up a proportion, but what we have found is a lot of times kids can set up the proportion, but they don't always get the right measurements in the correct spot in the proportion and therefore solve and find an incorrect answer. The box method will help you avoid putting things in the wrong spot in your proportion. So you literally draw a box and inside the box you're going to set one ratio equal to another ratio. On the outside of the box, on the top part we're going to write small and on the bottom we'll write big because there will always be two figures, a small one and a large one. Now, they have to give you information on the figures, and so up at the top, I've labeled this side given. We'll actually be filling that in with which side that is. Sometimes it'll be top or bottom or left or right, um, but that could be different for each figure, so right now I'm just calling it side given. Okay, let's take a look at our first example. You can see that we have two similar triangles and I can always do my arc marks to know which sides are or which angles are corresponding. And after I do that, I'm going to set up the box. So as I mentioned, small on the top big on the bottom, and then on the top of the box we're going to label our two given sides. Now when I look at my triangles, I can see that they're giving me dimensions here, which I'm going to call the left side, Okay, and here will be my matching left side. And I also see they're giving me dimensions here, which is the bottom side. So I literally wrote left side, bottom side, so I know how to fill in. Okay, so because right here I'm going to be looking at my small figure, I'm going to go to the small figure, the small left-hand side. That's going to be right here, and that's 5 inches. Now I'm going to go to the left side of the big figure. So I'm going right here, left side of the big figure says X. Okay, that's the piece we're going to be trying to calculate. Okay, next I'm going to go to the bottom side of the small figure. So whatever is on the bottom side of the small figure is going to go right here. Small figure, bottom side, I see 6 inches. And bottom side of the big figure is going to go right here. Bottom side of the big figure is 8 inches, so I'll put an 8 here. Okay, next I'm going to be doing my math. Most of you are very familiar with solving proportions, um, and so this is where I know that the, the numbers that are diagonally across from each other get multiplied, so 6 times x, and that will be equal to my opposite diagonals multiplied together, so 5 times 8. Okay, 6 times x is 6x is equal to 40, and now I'm going to isolate my variable by doing an inverse operation divide by 6, divide by 6, and 40 divided by 6 gives me 6 and 2 thirds, or 6.6 6 repeating. I'm going to go with the fraction, 6 and 2 thirds, and I know that my missing side then will be 6 and 2 thirds, I'm going to quick check, make sure I have the right label, inches. So this missing side, I now calculated, will be 6 and 2 thirds inches. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at our next example. This time we're looking at trapezoids, or quadrilaterals. Um, the sides that they are giving me, to me, I would label these as the top. So up here I'm going to write top. And the right-hand side is the other spot where they're giving me information. So I'll call that right side. Okay. Now, I'm going to go ahead and fill in my information. For my small figure, the top side of the small figure is 9 centimeters. 
Okay, the right side of the small figure is six centimeters. Now I'm gonna look at my large figure. The top side of my big figure is 12 centimeters. And the top side of my, I'm sorry, the right side of my big figure is the piece I'm trying to figure out, so we'll call it X. All right, off to the side here, I'm gonna do my math, and nine times X will be equal to 12 times six. Well, nine times X is just nine X, and 12 times six is 72. All right, I'm gonna do an inverse operation of divide by nine to get X by itself, and I get X equals eight, check my label. So my missing side is eight centimeters. Let's do our last example. Uh, this one looks a little bit tougher because our figures are both right triangles, but they don't look the same shape. Um, it looks like we're gonna have to turn one of them to um, make them look similar. So I'm gonna take my small figure and I'm gonna turn him so that he looks like this. Okay, and my missing side X will be over here, and the long side with my right angle on it is over here. And now it looks to me like we have the bottom and the right sides of our figure. I'm going to go ahead and fill in that information. The small triangle bottom is X. The small triangle right side is 10 inches. And on the big figure, the bottom side of the big figure is 11 inches, while the right side is 13 inches. Let's go ahead and do our math. I've got 13 times X will be equal to 11 times 10. That means my equation is 13X will be equal to 110. Let's isolate X here by dividing by 13 on both sides. And 13 goes into 110, 8.46, and there's a big long decimal there. I'm going to round to the hundredths and say that's going to give me 8.46 inches. All right, guys, go ahead and complete your checkpoint questions. Take your notes and your checkpoints up to your teacher, and good luck.